Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around the Table, and this is The Castles of Burgundy, a dice rolling, tile placement board game for two to four players. Let me show you how to play. You and your friends are <clears throat> princes in 15th century France. Everybody gets one lonely castle on a big plot of undeveloped land. You're trying to complete your estate by building cool stuff. The stuff gets you points, and whoever has the most points at the end of five phases of five rounds wins the game. The five phases are tracked up in this corner of the main board. There are goods of various colors that make up five random stacks of five tiles apiece, and those stacks get piled on these five phase spots. High five! <laughs> At the beginning of every phase, a stack of goods tiles is spread across these five slots. The board is populated with six-sided tiles. These are some of the tiles that you'll use to build out your estate. If you're playing with fewer players, you'll put out fewer six-sided tiles. The big white numbers make it clear which slots to fill and which slots to leave empty in three- and two-player games. The tiles that go on the main board are randomized. But their positions aren't. Blue sailboats always go here, gray mines always go here, and so on. In a three-player game, this special space alternates between dark green tiles and gray tiles, starting with dark green. At the top of a round, everybody rolls two dice in their player color. There are four different actions you can take with each of your dice. Take a six-sided tile from the big board. The tiles are grouped into six numbered depots. So if you roll the one, you can take a tile from the 1 depot, and if you roll a 5, you can take a tile from the 5 depot. When you take a tile, you can't add it to your estate right away. It goes into one of these storage slots at the corner of your board. This is sort of like purgatory for all the stuff you're hoping to build. The next action you can take with one of your dice is to move a tile from purgatory onto your estate. Yellow tiles can only go on yellow spaces and blue tiles on blue and so on. The die you use has to match the number of the empty space in your estate. So if you rolled a 3 and you have a beige tile to place, you can add it to any beige 3-pip space in your estate. There is a catch, though. Any tile you add has to touch an adjacent tile. So in this scenario, if you rolled a 3 and you have a beige tile in your queue, you can only add it here or here because these are the only beige 3 spaces that are touching another tile on your board. The third action you can take with one of your dice is to sell goods. Over the course of the game, you'll have stacks of these goods piling up in this storage area. Each type of good has a little picture of a die on it with a different number showing. If you roll the two, you can sell all of your purple goods. You get one silverling for selling any number of goods. Silverlings are the game's currency and you start the game with only one of them. You also get two, three, or four victory points per tile in the stack that you sell, depending on whether you're playing a two, three, or four player game. When you take a sell action, you have to sell a whole stack in one go, and sold goods go face down on this space. The last action you can take with one of your dice is to take worker tiles. You can take this action regardless of what number you rolled, you just take two worker tiles from the supply and put them here in your, I don't know, your slave pit. You can cash in these worker tiles at any time to adjust your dice rolls up or down. One worker equals a single pip change, so a 4 becomes a 5, or a 3 becomes a 2. You can adjust a 1 to a 6, or a 6 to a 1 by spending a worker. Whenever you use one of your dice to take an action, you put it into this used die corner of your board, just to help you remember that you've already spent it. In addition to those four actions you can take with your dice, you can also spend two silverlings to buy one of the black tiles at the center of the board. You can do this once per turn at any point during your turn. A summary of the four dice actions you can take and the black tile purchase I just described is down here in the corner of your board. And that's the game in a nutshell. But since this is a Euro game, there's a little bit more detail to it than that. And most of that detail is in what these little six-sided tiles do when you add them to your estate. Well, here, I'll show you. When you place a dark green castle, you get to take an extra action as if you had a third die using any die result that you want. At the end of every phase, not every round, but every phase, you get one silverling for each gray mine that you've built in your estate. 
By building a ship on your estate, you can get some of these goods tiles and change the player order. At the beginning of the game, you roll to see who goes first. The highest rolling player gets one worker tile. Player two in clockwise order gets two worker tiles and so on. Down here on the main board, you build a tower of player markers with the starting player at the top. At the beginning of every round, the starting player also rolls a special white die. The result of that white die determines where the next good in sequence gets placed. So if a two is rolled, the good goes into depot two. As the game draws on, these goods are going to pile up in the different depots. So when you add a ship to your estate, two things happen. First, you get to take all of the goods from the depot of your choice. They stack up here on your player board according to color. Since there are only three slots, you can only hold three types of goods. So if you grab goods that don't fit in your storage area, you have to throw them away. Now the second thing that happens when you add a ship to your estate is that your player marker moves forward on this track. If that puts your player marker out front, then you become the starting player. If there's already a player there, your marker goes on top and you still become the starting player. There's a really interesting bit of strategy at play here. You don't want to build all of your ships too early, or else you'll reach the end of the track first and the other players may bury you at the bottom of the tower, forcing you down to last player status for the final chunk of the game. The reason why it's good to be first player is that you get first pick of all the six-sided tiles. These tiles get more and more scarce as the phase progresses, and they don't get refreshed until all five rounds are finished and a new phase begins. The light green farm tiles will have one of four different types of animals on them. Chickens, cows, sheep, and crispy delicious bacon. They have between two and four animals on them. When you first place one of these tiles, you score as many points as there are animals on the tile. So, you know, two points for two cows. If you lay down some chickens, you'd get three points for three chickens. But if you lay down another cow tile anywhere in this pasture, you score three points for those cows, plus two more points for the cows that are already there. More cows means more points. Four points for playing the tile, then another three points, plus two points for your pre-existing cow condition. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks cows. You're welcome, Ryan! The beige tiles are buildings. When you place a building in your estate, you get some kind of bonus. There's a handy guide at the side of your board with wonderfully clear icons that explain what each building can do for you. The warehouse lets you sell a stack of goods without using a die. The carpenter's workshop lets you take any beige building tile from one of the six depots on the main board. The church and Nine tiny burritos buildings do the same thing for gray, yellow, dark green, or blue, light green tiles, respectively. If you place one of these buildings and there aren't any tiles of the correct color left for you to take on the main board, you just place the building without getting the perk. The boarding house gets you four free worker tiles, while the bank gets you two silverlings. City Hall lets you add any one of the tiles in purgatory to your estate without using a die. When you add the watchtower, you immediately get four victory points. Now the cardinal rule of adding buildings is that you can't have two of the same building in the same beige region of your estate. The last type of tile you can add to your estate is the yellow knowledge tile. Now unlike the buildings, there is no handy guide and the icons are not wonderfully clear, so for at least your first few games you may have to rely on the instruction manual to explain what each knowledge tile does. Generally speaking, knowledge tiles let you break the rules or score extra points at the end of the game. Here are a couple of examples. These tiles give you four points for each type of the building they depict that's in your estate at the end of the game. This tile means that your workers can change your dice rolls by up to two pips instead of just one. These tiles let you adjust your die roll up or down when placing beige tiles, blue and light green tiles, and gray, yellow, or dark green tiles. There are lots more of these yellow knowledge tiles, but those are the kinds of things they do. The last aspect of the game that I haven't mentioned is that whenever you add a tile and complete a big chunk of color in your estate, you get bonus points. The legend is up here on your board. If you fill a one tile region, like this beige region, you get one point. If you fill in a five tile region, like this chunk of farmland, you get 15 points. Furthermore, depending on which phase you're in, you even get more bonus points for filling in a region. Fill in a colored region in phase A, and you'll get 10 extra points for doing it. 
If you fill in a region closer to the end of the game in phase E when it's kind of easier, you'll only get an extra two points. If you're the first player to fill in all regions of a single color in your estate, so this pasture and this pasture, you take this bonus tile. It gets you five, six, or seven points, depending on whether you're playing with two, three, or four players. If you're the second player to fill in all regions of one color, you take the smaller bonus tile, two, three, or four points for a two, three, or four player game. If you're the third or fourth player to do this, oh, you get nothing! You may wonder why this legend goes all the way up to eight tiles when the biggest region on your board is only five tiles. Well, that's because each of the player boards is double-sided, and you can either play the game so that everyone has the same estate configuration, or everyone has a different board. Some of the boards do have regions of up to eight tiles. Now, nerds have used math to determine that some of these player boards are a bit unfairly imbalanced. So it's up to you and your friends to decide which player boards you'll use in the game and who gets which board. The game runs for five phases with five rounds in each phase. The six-sided tiles get refreshed at the beginning of every phase, but the goods inside the depots stay there until somebody claims them by building a ship. Once the very last round is over, you get one point for every unsold goods tile, every unspent silverling, and every unused worker tile. The tiles stuck in purgatory don't do anything for you. Tally up any points the yellow knowledge tiles give you, and the player with the most points wins. The Castles of Burgundy is a highly regarded Euro-style board game that, despite a, a really dry theme and a very brown box. Still has some fun strategic elements and some jockeying for turn order that's kind of neat and a little bit of getting in each other's way that make this a superb board game for strategic competitive players. It'll give you a lot of fun nights around the table. Uh, and that is prune juice. Thanks for watching. I'm kind of like Tinkerbell. If you stop paying attention to me, I die. Click the coat of arms to subscribe. Turn on notifications to know when I've got something new.